Upon awakening, I was engulfed by an overwhelming sense of malaise that seemed to emanate from the very core of my being. My body was racked with coughs, and my temperature soared to alarming heights. Driven by the widespread belief that flu vaccinations were the most effective safeguard against illness, I made my way to the doctor's office, hopeful for protection. Yet, in an unexpected turn of events, my condition deteriorated further post-vaccination, plunging me into a state of panic. My attempts to cry out for assistance were thwarted by a parched throat that refused to produce sound, leaving me isolated and unheard. In the heart of a quaint Texas town, cradled by undulating hills and the serene flow of a pristine river, resided a youthful spirit named Lily. At the tender age of 14, I was brimming with dreams and a fervent desire to carve out a meaningful path for myself. Known for my intelligence, kindness, and unwavering determination, I was a teenager who navigated life with a sense of preparedness and a staunch refusal to succumb to peer pressure. Thus, the bewildering onset of my current predicament left me grappling for answers. One bright morning, I awoke to the discomfort of common cold symptoms, including a runny nose, an irritating throat, and a persistent headache. Concerned about the possibility of influenza, my mother and I sought the expertise of Dr. Roberts, our trusted family physician, especially with the school term on the horizon and my immune system seemingly compromised. Despite my aversion to needles, I mustered the courage to receive the flu shot, believing it to be in my best interest. Following the vaccination, I returned home, where fatigue overwhelmed me, leading to a day spent in slumber. However, the subsequent morning unveiled a deterioration in my health, my cough had intensified, and nausea had set in. As I studied my reflection, the pallor of my face seemed to signal a complete drain of vitality. In the weeks that followed, my flu symptoms receded, restoring a sense of normalcy. Yet, an undercurrent of unease persisted as new, inexplicable symptoms emerged. Despite my recovery from the flu, I was besieged by constant fatigue and an insatiable hunger. My mother attributed these changes to a growth spurt, but my intuition hinted at a deeper issue. I speculated that the medications, possibly containing steroids, were to blame for my sudden weight gain, a theory I shared with a close friend. However, my friend's expression, marked by concern, suggested that a return visit to the doctor was prudent. Despite the worry reflected in my friend's eyes, I masked my apprehension with a forced smile, clinging to a fragile optimism. Deep down, I was acutely aware that my friend's advice was not just wise but necessary. Acknowledging the importance of taking charge of my own well-being, I decided it was high time to get to the bottom of what was ailing me. Inspired by my friend Chloe's wise words, I resolved to embark on this journey of discovery on my terms. I meticulously crafted a strategy that would allow me to seek out the answers I desperately needed. Under the cover of night, with my parents lost in slumber, I quietly slipped out of the house. My heart was racing with a mix of fear and determination. Time was of the essence, and I felt the weight of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity pressing down on me. The thought of being discovered filled me with dread, yet I pushed these fears aside, driven by the urgency of my quest. I found myself stepping into a room that was sharply illuminated by fluorescent lights, its walls freshly coated in a stark white that seemed to amplify the chill in the air. The clinical, almost antiseptic odor that permeated the space was unsettling, making me feel nauseous. Nonetheless, I steeled myself and ventured further, navigating through the neatly arranged aisles of the 24-hour pharmacy. My eyes scanned the shelves, each step bringing me closer to the item I so desperately sought. This was more than a mere errand, it was a crucial step toward taking control of my health and future. At last, I found the section I was looking for, amidst an overwhelming array of options. Faced with a myriad of products, each one promising answers to questions I barely understood, I felt lost. How could I possibly select the right one from this sea of unfamiliar terms? Seeking assistance wasn't an option, the risk of being recognized was too high, and the thought of someone connecting me to my mother filled me with dread. Anxiously, I scanned the shelves, my eyes catching on terms like ovulation kit, fertility pills, and midstream pregnancy test, words that were alien to me. Amidst all these, I struggled to find what seemed to be a straightforward pregnancy test. It dawned on me that there was no guide for a girl in my predicament, no sign pointing the way for a terrified teenager fearing pregnancy. Alone in my decision-making, 
I eventually picked a few boxes that didn't seem too expensive and hurried to the register. As I had feared, the cashier's gaze bore into me with unspoken judgment. It's for a friend, I muttered, feeling my cheeks burn with embarrassment, while fervently hoping not to see a familiar face. The cashier's dismissive reply, that's what they all say, only added to my discomfort. I shot her a glare and quickly left, eager to escape. My absence from home that evening went unnoticed, a small mercy. Alone in my room, I braced myself to take the test, only to be met with the undeniable reality of two pink lines. Disbelief and panic washed over me. How was this possible? My experiences with boys were minimal, and I had always been the cautious one, especially in matters taught in life skills classes. The realization hit me like a tidal wave, and I found myself sobbing into my pillow, mourning the life I thought I had ahead of me. Determined for answers, I made my way to the doctor's office without an appointment. My arrival was timely, Dr. Roberts had just arrived and could see me immediately. My state of distress was palpable, and it took him a while to calm me down enough to discuss the situation. Despite my reluctance, I insisted on keeping the matter confidential, a request dr. Roberts reluctantly agreed to under the condition that a female nurse be present during the tests and that my parents be informed afterward. I had no choice but to comply. The confirmation of my pregnancy left me reeling. At just 14 years old, the reality of my situation was incomprehensible. I had been cautious, reserved, how had my life taken such an unexpected turn? The shock of the diagnosis was overwhelming, leaving me grappling with a reality that seemed impossible. At a loss for my next steps and grappling with uncertainty, I sought solace in confiding with my best friend, Chloe. Chloe's unwavering support was a beacon of hope during this tumultuous time. She not only lent a sympathetic ear but also helped strategize a thoughtful approach to broach the subject with my mother. The thought of revealing my situation to her filled me with dread, yet Chloe emphasized the importance of honesty and made me pledge to have this difficult conversation. Despite the promise, the fear of my mother's reaction, her possible fury, disappointment, and the inevitable lecture on how I had brought shame upon myself, kept me paralyzed with fear. I was trapped in a whirlwind of emotions, scared, and unsure of whom to seek guidance from next. The reality of my pregnancy and the subsequent decisions that lay ahead weighed heavily on me. I was caught between not wanting to proceed with the pregnancy and my reservations about abortion. This internal conflict left me feeling utterly lost, without a clear path forward. I mustered the courage to disclose my situation to my mother on several occasions, but the words failed me each time, leaving the truth unspoken. My father, with his stern demeanor and traditional views, was not someone I could envisage turning to for support or understanding. In this maze of confusion and fear, I found myself at a crossroads, grappling with decisions that seemed to have no right answer, and feeling increasingly isolated in my struggle. As days seamlessly merged into weeks, I found my physical health gradually improving, albeit my emotional state was in turmoil. The dilemma of disclosing my situation to my parents, friends, and the baby's father was a heavy burden. Isolation and a sense of desperation were my constant companions. Compounded by nausea and the challenge of starting school, concealing my pregnancy became an increasingly arduous task. I resorted to wearing loose-fitting clothes and sought refuge in secluded changing rooms, constantly haunted by the question, how could I bring an end to this distressing situation? Time marched on relentlessly, and my pregnancy became more apparent. My parents, perceptive and concerned, inquired about my well-being. Overwhelmed by emotion, I struggled to unveil the significant confession that weighed heavily on my heart. Despite their pressing concern, articulating the reality of my condition seemed an insurmountable feat this was far from an everyday occurrence, revealing my truth to my parents felt impossible. However, in a moment of vulnerability, I disclosed my situation to my mother upon her return from work one day. Shocked yet supportive, she grappled with her own worries but vowed to stand by me through it all. A subsequent doctor's visit confirmed my pregnancy, leaving my parents in a state of disbelief yet unwavering in their support. The looming question of the conception's circumstances remained unanswered. My mother, Sandra, struggled to come to terms with the revelation, seeking solace in prayer and contemplating the notion of an immaculate conception while striving to navigate the potential social repercussions. 
facing the reality of a challenging pregnancy at a tender age, the prospect of single parenthood loomed large. Despite the unwavering support from my parents and best friend, Chloe, the psychological scars ran deep. I was far from naive, I possessed the intellect to understand that there must be a rational explanation for my pregnancy, yet I was at a loss for how to proceed upon uncovering the truth. An unexpected call from Dr. Robert's office broke the silence, bringing with it a promise of answers. The urgency in their request for a face-to-face -face meeting left me apprehensive yet desperate for clarity. The anticipation of finally understanding how I had become pregnant at such a young age was overwhelming. Dr. Roberts, with his air of professionalism and years of medical training, seemed the only beacon of hope in unraveling this mystery. Yet, when the moment of truth arrived, his revelation was entirely unexpected, diverging from anything I could have anticipated, the revelation left me feeling flushed, my ears burning with embarrassment. Dr. Roberts had insisted, with an air of professionalism, that I should disclose the details of my pregnancy to my parents. His advice struck me as baffling, how could a doctor of his caliber fail to grasp the delicacy of my situation? Despite investing in the treatment, I found myself grappling with what felt like subpar guidance. I had been under the impression that Dr. Roberts was a compassionate ally, understanding of the nuances of my case. However, this interaction shattered that belief, revealing a disconnect I hadn't anticipated. In the moment my parents joined me, a sense of isolation enveloped me, as if a united front had formed against me. The thought of reporting Dr. Roberts for what I perceived as professional misconduct crossed my mind. I needed a moment to myself, to step outside and breathe in the crisp air, attempting to find solace in a brief escape and contemplate my next steps. The idea of seeking out a new physician seemed like the logical next step, yet my parents hesitated at the suggestion. Their reluctance stemmed from a trust in Dr. Roberts, who was intimately familiar with my medical history, making the prospect of starting afresh with someone new daunting for them. This complex web of emotions and decisions left me feeling trapped, yearning for a resolution that seemed just out of reach. Upon witnessing the unwavering resolve in my gaze, those around me comprehended that stepping back was the wisest course of action. The entire ordeal had become an unbearable burden for someone like me, who had until then, mustered all the strength I could. The news I received was nothing short of a catastrophe, yet, deep within, I knew I had to muster every ounce of courage for the sake of my unborn child. I persisted in attending my medical appointments and endeavored to maintain my well-being to the best of my abilities. My pregnancy journey was an anomaly, a narrative so peculiar that even my closest friends struggled to grasp its reality. At such a tender age, the complexities I faced seemed insurmountable, yet surrender was not an option especially in the absence of a logical medical justification for my condition. As the expected date of delivery neared, Sandra's anxiety intensified. She harbored concerns about our capability to nurture the baby, though I spared no effort in offering her reassurance. Sandra harbored deep-seated suspicions towards our doctor, sensing an unsettling enigma about him that eluded description, suggesting he was concealing something significant. Alas, the impending revelation of the truth awaited us. The harrowing truth of my conception was a secret I bore alone, divulged to me in a confidential discussion with the doctor. Despite my vow of silence, the weight of this secret became increasingly unbearable, signaling that its concealment would not last indefinitely. The prospect of this revelation reaching my parents through anyone but myself filled me with dread. I yearned to dismiss it from my thoughts, to feign normalcy, but the mounting evidence of the doctor's opposition left me with no such luxury. The inevitability of confronting this truth loomed over me, threatening to cast me as the scapegoat in this distressing saga, a notion that filled me with anxiety. Despite my attempts to evade this reality, and to shun the doctor's presence, my life seemed to spiral beyond my control, setting the stage for an unavoidable confrontation. Unbeknownst to me, an unforeseen visitor was making his way to me, promising to upend the fragile equilibrium of my existence. My life, up until that moment, had been a delicate balance, sustainable only if undisturbed. Yet, the imminent arrival of this visitor was an event beyond my prevention. His presence, unexpected as it was, heralded a transformative chapter in my life. When labor ensued, my heart was fraught with fear for my child's well-being, influenced by the doctor's ominous revelations. Despite the tumultuous circumstances surrounding my pregnancy, 
My deepest wish was for my child's safety, a wish that eclipsed all others. The labor was arduous and fraught with challenges, yet the moment I cradled my newborn, a profound sense of relief and joy washed over me. I was convinced that the trials we faced were behind us, and a semblance of the idyllic life I envisioned awaited us, albeit with a few adjustments. Unbeknownst to me, however, the future held a revelation that would not only stagger me to my core but also compel me to scrutinize every decision I had made thus far. Who was this individual, and what undisclosed information did they possess? This impending disclosure was poised to unravel in the years to come, marking the beginning of yet another chapter filled with uncertainty and introspection, dedicated to ensuring a bright future for my child, I embarked on a challenging journey that saw me balancing academic pursuits, professional responsibilities, and the demands of motherhood with unwavering determination. Despite the overwhelming odds, I steadfastly refused to succumb to defeat. My efforts bore fruit as my son blossomed into a joyful and robust young boy, who held a deep admiration for his mother. This transformation filled me with immense pride, not just in him, but in the person I had evolved into through these trials. Ultimately, I realized my aspirations, reaching a point in life where minor annoyances ceased to affect me. My focus shifted towards embracing the possibilities that lay ahead. Nevertheless, the unresolved issues concerning my child's father lingered in my thoughts, casting a shadow over my successes and reminding me of the complex tapestry of our lives. The esteemed doctor's actions had left an indelible mark on my life, a wound that seemed impossible to heal. Forgiveness felt like a distant, unattainable concept, particularly after enduring the turmoil his decisions had cast upon me. Yet, what became of Dr. Roberts? Despite having every justification to drag him through the courts, I chose not to. I resolved to let the past remain in the past and to turn my attention to the bright future cradled in my arms. There was so much promise on the horizon, but dwelling on bygone grievances would only anchor us to a place we needed to move beyond. My son, my precious baby boy, served as the beacon of hope that guided me away from the pettiness that once consumed me. He was a reminder of the vibrant life that awaited us, filled with dreams and possibilities. With him by my side, I felt a profound sense of peace and assurance that everything would be alright. Yet, the question of how it all began lingered like a shadow. I named him Jonah, a gentle soul whose presence brought an unexpected joy to my journey into motherhood. As he grew, his resemblance to his father became more pronounced, a fact that I observed with a sense of wonder rather than resentment. Embracing motherhood was like turning a new page in my life, a chapter where the past was a distant echo rather than a persistent whisper. However, the past has a way of resurfacing, often when least expected. I had naively hoped that by forging ahead, the shadows of my child's birth would not catch up to us. But time had not erased the knowledge of another, someone who clung to the secret and was determined to bring it to light, regardless of the fallout. As they plotted from the shadows, I found myself maturing rapidly, navigating the swift transition from adolescence to adulthood for the sake of my child. Jonah was adored by my parents, who showered him with love as if he were their own, yet they wisely left the bulk of parenting responsibilities to me. It was a lesson in independence, one that I embraced wholeheartedly. Despite their supportive nature, my parents were plagued by curiosity about Jonah's paternity, a mystery I was committed to keeping indefinitely. Sandra, my mother, made several attempts to coax the truth from me, but I remained steadfast, a fortress of silence. Her frustration was palpable, but her determination was fueled by more than mere curiosity. The unknown surrounding Jonah's father posed a myriad of potential dangers, from unexpected custody battles to hereditary health issues. Driven by a maternal instinct to protect, Sandra contemplated a drastic step, securing a DNA sample from Jonah to unravel the mystery once and for all. As she strategized, seeking the opportune moment to act, the complexity of our situation deepened, completely oblivious to the presence of an unwelcome guest at her doorstep, Sandra remained unaware as the individual persistently rang the doorbell, followed by a series of knocks that echoed through the empty hallway of her home. Despite their efforts, there was no response from within. It wasn't until the visitor's patience had worn exceedingly thin, marked by continuous knocking and the incessant ringing of the bell, that Sandra became aware of their presence. However, the true cause for concern wasn't the relentless attempts. To capture her attention, it was the identity of the individual standing outside her door, 
a revelation that had the potential to turn her world upside down. This person, an unforeseen nightmare, was the last person Sandra ever imagined would find their way to her home, igniting a wave of panic over the safety of her daughter and grandson. The visitor's voice, laced with impatience, resonated louder as he pounded on the door with increased vigor. Sandra had ignored his previous attempts, but with each word he uttered, her anxiety escalated, her senses sharpening as a primal protectiveness over her family surged within her. The identity of the man remained a mystery, yet every fiber of Sandra's being screamed that he was bad news, an unwelcome disruption she was determined to avoid at all costs. With her heart pounding like a drum against her ribcage, Sandra mustered the courage to approach the door. Each step down the hallway felt heavier than the last, a mix of fear and determination propelling her forward. Drawing in a steadying breath, she finally reached the door. Hesitantly, she peered through the peephole, bracing herself for the confrontation that lay on the other side. Standing before Sandra on her doorstep was the last person she ever anticipated seeing. The visage was not unfamiliar, yet it belonged to Dr. Roberts, a man unequivocally unwelcome at her residence. Upon recognizing him, Sandra inquired with a mix of surprise and skepticism about the purpose of his unexpected visit. Dr. Roberts appeared visibly disheveled and winded, as though he had made his way to her doorstep in a hurry, propelled by some urgent matter. Sandra pondered over the urgency that drove him to her home and his intentions. After a brief, unsettling silence, Sandra attempted to retreat and shut the door, signaling the end of the unwelcome interaction. However, Dr. Roberts interjected, holding the door, and uttered a sentence that ignited Sandra's anxiety and fury, you don't understand, I need to tell you something about your daughter. The mere mention of her daughter by Dr. Roberts stirred a storm within Sandra. Concerns for her daughter's well-being surged, leaving no room for trust or patience towards the doctor. Firmly, she demanded his departure, refusing to entertain whatever information he claimed to hold. Despite the gravity of his message, Dr. Roberts departed without further confrontation, leaving Sandra with a fleeting sense of relief. Yet, she was oblivious to the critical error she had just made. Dar. Roberts harbored exclusive knowledge of a pivotal event in their lives, an event Sandra was too aggrieved to consider from his perspective. Later that day, when I returned home and inquired about how Sandra had managed with young Jonah, her reaction was telling. The color drained from her face, realizing the inevitability of disclosing the day's unexpected visitor to me. Preferring I learn from her directly, Sandra hesitantly revealed Dr. Robert's visit and his claim of bearing significant news about me. My reaction mirrored Sandra's initial shock, the fear of confronting a long-avoided truth about my pregnancy and the years of evasion that followed was palpable. When I mentioned Jonas, Sandra's suspicions deepened, prompting her maternal instincts to seek the truth behind my evasiveness and Dr. Robert's involvement. Conflicted, Sandra wondered if dismissing Dr. Roberts had been a mistake. Desperate for transparency, Sandra implored, what's going on, honey? You know who the father is, Lily. I just want to protect you. My response, laden with tears and trepidation, was poised to unravel the fabric of our perceived reality. Dr. Roberts, I began, on the verge of disclosing a revelation that would upend everything Sandra thought she understood. After taking a deep breath, I gathered the courage to offer an explanation that was long overdue. He had every valid reason to come to you regarding our child. Indeed, he's entitled to do so, I declared with a sense of finality. The fact is, he's Jonah's biological father. As this revelation unfolded, a wave of realization washed over Sandra. It was as if the pieces of a puzzle she hadn't known she was assembling suddenly clicked into place. How could she have overlooked the striking resemblance? Her grandson bore an uncanny likeness to the man she had unceremoniously dismissed just hours earlier. The irony of the situation was not lost on me, and it ignited a flare of anger within. Reflecting on a peculiar incident from the past, I couldn't help but recall the day I went in for what I believed was a routine flu vaccination. When I received that flu shot, I immediately sensed something was amiss. Never before had I been injected in the stomach, and the needle they used was unusually large, I recounted, puzzled by the memory. It wasn't until later that the shocking truth came to light. The doctor had made a significant error by administering the wrong injection. Instead of a simple flu vaccine, I had been given an IVF treatment. 
This unexpected twist of fate led to my pregnancy. By the time I pieced everything together and realized what had happened, it was far too late to alter the course of events. This complex web of circumstances brought about an unforeseen connection between our families, drawing us together in a way we never could have anticipated. After watching this story, what do you think of? Then there is an another story. Let's expect what will happen. When Brienne first shared the photograph on her social media platforms, it epitomized innocence. Little did she know, the repercussions of this seemingly harmless act would unfold in a dramatic and unforeseen manner. The photograph, which initially appeared to be just another addition to Brienne's online collection, caught the attention of law enforcement authorities. Promptly after laying eyes on the image, the police took decisive action, which led to a distressing encounter with Brienne's husband, James. The gravity of the situation dawned on Brienne when she realized the contents of the photograph, making it clear why the authorities were compelled to detain James. James vehemently protested his innocence amidst the allegations thrown his way. However, the police remained skeptical of his claims. Even Brienne, his wife, who had stood by him through thick and thin, began to harbor doubts about her husband's innocence. She sensed James was concealing something, fervently hoping it wasn't what the police suspected. Despite her prayers, James was taken into custody, and the next time Brienne saw him, he was facing trial. The situation seemed like a bad dream to Brienne, but the reality hit her hard when the photograph was displayed in court. With each viewing of the image during the proceedings, Brienne chastised herself for not recognizing the ominous details sooner. One might wonder what was so incriminating in the photograph that necessitated James's arrest. How would this ordeal affect Brienne and her family's life moving forward? Brienne, an aspiring online influencer, had meticulously curated her social media presence, frequently sharing snapshots of her family life. This routine had amassed her a considerable following over the years. The photograph in question was part of Brienne's regular updates, a seemingly innocuous family photo that blended into her feed of countless other family moments. However, this particular image attracted an unusual amount of attention. Despite being preoccupied at work, Brienne noticed her phone buzzing with an incessant stream of notifications from Instagram. Her curiosity piqued, she eagerly anticipated her break to delve into the sudden surge of interactions. But before she could investigate, the notifications vanished, and her attempt to access her Instagram account revealed it had been suspended. This development left Brienne bewildered and concerned, aware of the serious implications such an action might entail. Brienne was confident she hadn't breached any of Instagram's terms of service with her recent posts, having learned from past experiences where her content had ventured into controversial territories. She had painstakingly attempted to erase those chapters of her life from the internet, understanding all too well the permanence of online content. Yet, despite her efforts to start anew with a family-focused Instagram channel, it seemed her past had resurfaced, casting a shadow over her present. Desperate for answers, Brienne reached out to Instagram's support team, hoping for clarity or assistance. However, her messages went unanswered, leaving her in a state of uncertainty and anxiety. This chain of events serves as a stark reminder of the unforeseen consequences that can arise from sharing personal moments online, and how quickly a simple photograph can escalate into a life-altering situation. Following her work shift, Brienne found herself driving toward her home, her mind swirling with uncertainty about how to proceed. The plan was to have a crucial discussion with her husband, James, the father of her children, about their next steps. Contrary to her expectations of spending the entire day at home, upon her arrival, she was taken aback to discover that her vehicle was nowhere in sight. Instead, the scene that unfolded before her eyes was alarming, three police cruisers were stationed right in front of her residence, and the front door stood agape, revealing the chaos within. Officers were gathered, engaged in serious conversation just outside the premises. Parking her car at a safe distance, Brienne found herself paralyzed, unsure of how to confront the situation at hand. Before she could muster the courage to approach, a figure made its way toward her vehicle. It was her neighbor, who, recognizing Brienne's car, hurried to share vital information. The neighbor, visibly shaken, wasted no time in hopping into the passenger seat. She recounted witnessing James making a hasty retreat through the backyard, evidently anticipating the arrival of law enforcement due to his suspicious behavior. 
the neighbors speculated that James's actions might have merited police involvement. As they sat discussing these alarming developments, the police, having noticed Brienne's car, approached. A knock on the window signaled the urgency of the situation, prompting Brienne to step out and face them. Confronted by the police, Brienne found herself at a loss, grappling with the shock of the unfolding events. Despite her confusion, the officer's indifference was palpable as they pressed her for James's whereabouts, echoing the neighbor's earlier concerns. In a moment of maternal instinct, Brienne's primary concern shifted to the safety of her children, leading her to inquire about their whereabouts. The officers informed her that the children had been safely relocated to her mother's house, a mere ten minutes away, ensuring their well-being amidst the chaos. With no information forthcoming from the officers regarding the reason behind their search for James, Brienne stood her ground, refusing to cooperate until she was provided with details or had legal representation. Despite the officers possessing a search warrant for her home, Brienne knew she had little choice but to let the search proceed. Prioritizing her children's safety, she made her way to her mother's house, all the while attempting to reach James via phone. Call after call went unanswered, each rejection fueling her growing frustration and anger at his apparent disregard for their situation. Upon arriving at her mother's house, Brienne's focus shifted entirely to her children. Despite her own turmoil, she was determined to provide them with a sense of security. The children, though visibly shaken by their ordeal with the police, appeared to be unharmed and in good spirits. They shared their experience of the police's forceful entry, moment that had undoubtedly been frightening for them. In these trying times, Brienne's resolve to protect and comfort her children was unwavering, serving as a testament to her strength and dedication as a mother amidst the chaos surrounding her family. The officers exhibited exceptional kindness, maintaining a calm demeanor throughout the interaction, and made concerted efforts to soothe their nerves. They extended heartfelt apologies for having unintentionally frightened them, emphasizing their concern for their well-being. The same officers who had facilitated their safe passage to Grandma's house remained on standby, showcasing their dedication. Their presence was a reassurance, a silent vow to protect in the event James decided to make an appearance at the house or attempted to establish contact through a phone call. Brienne harbored a desire for a deeper understanding of the situation, yearning for additional clarification. However, the rapid unfolding of events left her with little opportunity to voice her inquiries. When Brienne answered the call, James's immediate question about their honeymoon dinner caught her off guard. It seemed like an odd detail to inquire about at such a time, but she quickly realized it was his method of confirming her identity over the phone, given the precarious situation he found himself in. James expressed regret for his delayed response, explaining his need to remain undetected, as any sound could potentially betray his location. However, he reassured her that he had found a secure hiding spot away from prying eyes. James's next revelation was that he was aware of the likely police presence around Brienne. He was prepared to turn himself in, provided he was guaranteed a fair trial, with her lawyer present to defend his case and prove his innocence. Brienne found herself in a whirlwind of emotions. The man she knew as her loving spouse was now on the run, labeled a criminal. She yearned to delve into the details, to understand the full story, but she knew this was neither the time nor the place for such discussions. Her priority was to avoid giving the police any additional information that might further incriminate James. When James requested to speak to the officer in charge, Brienne quickly handed over the phone, choosing from the two officers present. Unbeknownst to them, the officers were already steps ahead, and the situation escalated rapidly. In a desperate attempt to warn James, Brienne grabbed the phone, shouting a warning about his compromised location. This action led to a confrontation with the officers, who were now ready to charge her with obstruction of justice, risking her own freedom in the process. Amidst the chaos, everyone was stunned when James's voice echoed through the speaker, declaring his decision not to flee. He chose to face the consequences, hoping for a slim chance to reunite with Brienne. The officers, while seemingly agreeing to his surrender, had no real intention of allowing James to return. They intercepted him en route, putting a swift end to his fleeting hope of freedom. In a last-ditch effort, James implored Brienne to seek legal assistance. Following his instructions, Brienne reached out to their lawyer, who wasn't surprised by the turn of events and agreed to act as a mediator. 
The lawyer's prompt agreement to get involved offered a glimmer of hope in a grim situation, setting the stage for the next chapter in their unfolding legal battle. Brienne clung to hope, trusting in the legal system to unveil the truth and bring justice to their tumultuous ordeal that I in a mere twenty minutes, he had arrived. Stepping into the interrogation room, he was met by Brienne, who had been anxiously waiting. The weight of the moment was almost unbearable for Brienne, her heart raced with anxiety. The very future of her family hung in the balance within the confines of that room, a realization that rendered her feeling utterly powerless. She desperately wanted to be of assistance to James, to do anything that could tilt the scales in his favor. However, she found herself frozen, unable to act, until the moment the lawyer emerged. Initially, the attorney made a beeline for the restroom, swiftly followed by his urgent journey to meet Brienne. His intent was clear, he sought a private conversation within the confines of her vehicle, away from prying ears. His pace was brisk, bordering on a sprint, which piqued Brienne's curiosity about the developments within the interrogation room. The attorney shared his frustration over the limited dialogue with James, hindered by the constant surveillance of police officers. James had expressed his distrust towards the officers, even in their absence, yet there was a glimmer of hope. Despite the challenges, James managed to discreetly pass a note to the attorney containing an address, though doing so required considerable effort. The lawyer seemed to struggle with his emotions, caught between wanting to divulge more and being at a loss for words. His turmoil was palpable, and just as Brienne prepared to delve deeper, he abruptly exited the vehicle and drove off. Determined, Brienne set off towards the given address, adopting a cautious approach upon arrival. She opted not to alight immediately, instead circling the vicinity and noting a police vehicle stationed outside the destination. This observation led her to suspect that the presence of the police was more than mere coincidence. She strategically parked a block away, maintaining a clear view of both the police car and the jewelry store address. With time to scrutinize the location, she confirmed it was indeed a jewelry store and chose to bide her time, a decision that proved wise. However, as time ticked by, her initial suspicions about the police car began to wane. Eventually, the police officer exited the jewelry store, and after a brief exchange, the jeweler locked up, turning off the lights shortly after the officer departed. This sequence of events left Brienne questioning the relevance of the address to James's innocence. As the 24-hour interrogation window neared its end, Brienne's hope of unearthing the truth grew. With the lawyer no longer in the picture, she anticipated a forthcoming revelation. Despite her determination to support her husband, Brienne couldn't shake off the lingering doubts about the potential ramifications of the truth. She mustered the courage to confront James, inquiring about his innocence. His response, filled with assurance, brought her a sense of relief yet she remained skeptical, questioning the significance of the cryptic note leading to the jewelry store. James seemed puzzled by her line of inquiry, prompting Brienne to ponder the deeper implications of her discovery at the jewelry store and its connection to proving James's innocence, inquiring with a mix of curiosity and urgency, she sought clarification. As she elaborated on her situation, it became evident that the constraints of time had been too tight, leaving her with no opportunity to draft even a brief note. The request for a message had been made directly to the lawyer by him, bypassing traditional means of communication. The task at hand for Brianna was no ordinary errand, she was tasked with retrieving her wedding ring. This particular request left her puzzled, out of all possible requests, why had Santiago specifically asked for her wedding ring? The gravity of the situation dawned on her, time was of the essence, and there was not a moment to lose. With a heightened sense of urgency, Brianna made her way back home, driven by the realization that if she did not act swiftly, the opportunity might be seized by someone else. The underpinning reason for this haste wasn't just about securing a piece of jewelry, it was intertwined with the fate of James who was on the brink of facing a trial. The timing couldn't be more critical. This was the moment to gather evidence that could potentially sway the outcome of the trial in James's favor, proving his innocence once and for all. The clock was ticking, and the stakes were high, underscoring the importance of every action taken in this narrow window of opportunity. That's all about our story. If you like this story, please like and subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next story.